Hello and welcome to Chemical Distraction. So if you guys have been wondering where I've been, um, school basically, and uh, at work, um, but I'm back for now. Anyways, today we're going to be doing a video that's a little bit different from the video content that I usually do. And if you guys like it or don't like it, just let me know in the comments. And basically, let me just explain. I made this channel to help people. And the way that I felt like I could help people was to get people interested in chemistry, which is great. But I noticed some people in chemistry discords um, talking about a certain individual, and I wanted to talk about the situation. Anyways, his name is Nature Jab, and I've been actually looking at some of his content. I'm like, wow, this is interesting. You know, he's doing stuff with uh, biofuels. I like biofuels. I didn't really look too much into it, and then I'm like, oh, let me see if I can get in contact with him, because um, I've talked to other YouTubers, and um, I'm like, yeah, we'll reach out to him. And um, so I looked on his website, and uh, I found this. $50 for half an hour, really. That is, what? <laughs> so, no, I was not going to spend $50 to spend speak with Nature Jab for half an hour, that's that's not gonna happen. So I just figured maybe I'll watch some of his videos, maybe I'll get some idea of what he's doing exactly. So apparently, for those of you who don't know, he's taking a bunch of plastic and he's sort of heating it up in a pyrolysis machine that he made and it produces um, biofuel. So despite what his comments say about him being, you know, the next Albert Einstein mixed with Stephen Hawking and all that, this process isn't new. This has been done before, and it's basically been around since, like, plastic's been around. People have been turning plastic into biofuel. So why are we just now hearing about this green fuel revolution? Well, the thing is, it's been around, and it's been sort of quietly in the background. Pyrolysis research has been going on in academia for forever now, and the reason you probably haven't heard about it is because it is not very green. The idea is green, but in practice, it ends up producing a lot of not so green things. There's millions of dollars that goes into researching pyrolysis because, you know, if, if you could produce good clean fuel from this, then that would be amazing. But the thing is, this guy's sort of got this whole setup where he's doing it at sort of random temperatures with random plastics at, uh, apparently high pressure for some reason. And he gets this, which he calls crude oil. Um, me and some of the guys in my chemistry discords that I've been talking to, we personally like to call it uh, cancer juice. And yes, I realize that sounds a little mean, but allow me to explain. When you heat up plastic or pyrolyze it or whatever, um, it sort of breaks the chains and the plastic molecules and releases this gases and liquids. And these gases and liquids are made up in large part of uh, a bunch of alkanes of different lengths, alkanes, alkenes, and things like that. And that's basically what gasoline is. So great, you know, it's, it's sort of like gasoline, except for there's this one big problem where a lot of it's benzene. So for those of you who don't know what benzene is, benzene is basically the chemical in gasoline that sort of gives it that weird distinct gasoline smell. And it makes up about 1% of gasoline. And the actually the EPA and you know a lot of people try really hard to get as much as that benzene out of the gasoline as they can for safety reasons because benzene is uh, very highly carcinogenic, which means it causes cancer. So, you know, what percentage benzene is the f fuel that he's producing? Well, according to my research um, of the liquid products, it depends on the plastics involved. And uh, from what I've seen, I don't know if they know exactly what plastics are involved, but let's be ambitious. Let's, let's say he uses polyethylene, which is a pretty good plastic for it. Um, if you sort of crack or pyrolyze polyethylene, um, According to the research I've seen, you'll get maybe 10%-ish benzene, which, you know, <laughs> it's not great. 
1% benzene and gas versus 10% benzene and gas. That's, that's not very good. Um, but let's look at the high end. Let's look at the extreme of that. Um, you know, there's lots of studies that sort of show in between. Let's say he's using PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Looks sort of like this. And um, if we pyrolyze it, we can expect a benzene yield on the order of, you know, maybe up to 60% benzene. And you may be like, wow, that's a lot of benzene. How do you get that much benzene? Well, with um, this long chain of PET, um, the esters sort of hydrolyze and then you get carboxylic acids and then the carboxylic acids decarboxylate under the heat producing carbon dioxide and then boom, you get benzene. And uh, you get a lot of benzene. So let's just take a roundabout guess and say, you know, maybe it's 30% it's benzene or something like that. Well, maybe he's separating it. Maybe the distillation separates out the benzene. Um, unfortunately, no. Gasoline boils at around 80-ish degrees with like a huge distribution. Like it's sort of all over the place because there's so many alkanes and alkenes. But benzene boils at 85 degrees Celsius. It's, it's right there. So there's no room to really get the benzene off efficiently. It's just too close. We also might be able to use like chemicals to remove the benzene using sort of chemical reactions. Um, that's an option. It, I think it's being done right now in research and stuff like that, but he doesn't really seem to be doing that. He's just sort of made it and then he's running it in engines and, and stuff like that. So now knowing that there's the risk of a whole bunch of cancerous chemicals, I decided to reach out again to Nature Jab and I made it very clear that I was worried about the carcinogen benzene problem and I got this response. They basically know about the problem and they're going to fix it with the next version which involves a new patented stirring technology and an improved distillation head basically. So when I heard this, I was immediately confused. The distillation, um, that's not gonna really change anything. And the stirring, um, that doesn't make any difference. So why would you even patent that? But uh, when I was looking into it, I uh, sort of got some answers. So I saw a podcast where Nature Jab was sort of on it. He was explaining all this stuff. And he explained that he used to be a welder. And he read up on pyrolysis online. He got really interested. So he built this whole machine and he's doing this whole process. And I think that's great. You know, it, lots of people get inspired to do chemistry and science and stuff like that. And that's awesome. But you, you really need to take safety into consideration. You, you don't want to underestimate the dangers involved with things like benzene. It, it could be very dangerous. So I, I tried talking to the gentleman and telling him, you know, this doesn't really make sense. You should maybe contact Nature Jab about this. Um, and I was ignored. So I reached out to the people in his discord and from what I understand of, of the people I talked to, they were very uh, reputable and they were very in on the project. And they basically told me that they are well aware of the carcinogen problem um, and they don't really know how much carcinogen is in the fuel. And I'm guessing they're sort of underestimating how much there actually is and they don't really seem interested in doing anything about it right now because they, they don't really know how to, so they're just sort of pushing forward and ignoring the problem. So, this is why I made a video. Julian, I know that you're interested in, you know, helping the world, doing science and chemistry and, you know, plastic, fuel, that's great. But the thing is, this is a very complicated subject. There's a lot that goes into it and you really need to be careful with who you talk to and who you get advice from because there's a lot of dangers that are sort of being overlooked here. And I don't even think that some of the people in your Discord realize how extreme it could really be. Now, I don't want to make this too personal, um, so I'll, I'll try and keep it brief, but let me just say, I grew up in a household with a number of people who developed cancer and it takes everything from them and it, it's truly horrible. And there's some debate as to whether or not their cancer was caused by environmental factors, maybe certain carcinogens around them, sort of like in your instance. And I don't wanna see anybody else end up like that, truly. I, I want 
what's best for you and I want what's best for the people around you. So when I see videos of you making this stuff and sort of spilling this stuff and sort of burning it in an engine, which doesn't really get rid of all of it, there's still a little bit of exhaust that's just benzene and it just sort of sprays out all over the road and in your neighborhood. And also that, that horrible dark black soot that you're pouring out of the machine. I know you said uh, this in one video. This is fertilizer I have created from plastic waste. Yeah, that is not clean carbon and that cannot be used as fertilizer. From my research, that consists of heavy metals, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which, you know, fancy word for something that causes cancer, a whole bunch of other stuff, plastic additives that didn't get, you know, distilled off. Please, please do not bury that as fertilizer, especially in your backyard or anything like that. I, I hope you haven't been doing that. And finally, one last thing. I monetize my content. I have donations and I, I've tried doing some other things, maybe a little too much, honestly. But the thing is, when I monetize my content, I'm pretty straightforward about what I can offer. And I feel like you are monetizing your content and you've raised maybe $10,000 by now. And the thing I take issue with is you're taking this money to sort of do research, right? Like improve the process, be green, you know, do this large scale, all that kind of stuff. Everybody seems to have that in mind when they comment or do whatever. But the thing is, you don't really seem to be taking steps towards making that a reality because you don't really seem to know that the current scientific consensus is that you need catalysts and that you need to do fuel treatments with chemicals to sort of remove things like benzene or change it into something else. And you're not, you don't really seem to be doing any of that stuff, which is, you know, do whatever you want. But I think that people have a right to know that you're just sort of, you know, twiddling with sticks, trying to figure this stuff out mixing, you know, technologies and stuff like that, you know, that doesn't really make any sense. You don't, you don't need to patent those things. Uh, I'm just letting you know, but like, seriously, it, it doesn't matter. And I don't really want to sound like a jerk, but let's just me create an analogy. Let's say I did this fundraising project so I could build a super skyscraper and everybody could live in it and be awesome. Amazing super skyscraper. But the thing is, um, I don't know anything about building anything. And I should probably let people know, hey, I don't really know how to build anything. And I'm also really not going to try that hard to look up how other people build things. And uh, that's, you know, I'm, I'm a good welder, though. I like, I like welding. I'm just saying, if, if people knew that they were giving money to this sort of non-professional messing around and sort of guessing game then they might feel a little different about it. So to finish this up, let me just say, I didn't want to make this video. I just wanted to let people know that, hey, maybe this project isn't as green as it seems it is, in my opinion. And you know what? If I'm wrong, leave a comment. Please, I want to know. If I'm wrong about this, please show me the information about how the benzene production is actually very minimal. The thing is, I tried really looking into this objectively, and I, I think it might be dangerous. So there. Also, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Vsauce, Michael, here. <laughs> um, he's having a convention in San Francisco, and I wanted to know if you guys were going to the convention. If you are, leave a comment. If you want to meet up, that would be fantastic. I'd love to meet some people. Um, if you're not, then, you know, like, you guys let me know, because um, I was thinking about going, but if, you know, nobody's really going, it's like, oh, I don't want to just sort of be sitting there doing nothing. I tried reaching out to some chemistry YouTubers, but it's sort of up in the air, so we'll see. But I want to know. You let me know, and uh, I might be able to make it work. So, thank you.